Good morning, everybody. Hope you had a great weekend. Um, we had a lot of rain and a lot of moisture. Uh, we came in to mid-April, four inches behind. Moisture-wise, uh, we've about caught up with um, the rains that we've had over the last month. So biggest rain months in Wichita are April and May, and well, it certainly is turning out that way. The wheat crop is made. One more rain um, in early June and um, the wheat crop will come into the barn and has a chance to be a, um, um, a really, really, really good harvest, which is good. And you can see that reflected in grain prices. Uh, deflation is going on in the um, agricultural sector, except for the meat side. On the beef, uh, corn's well off, beans are well off, um, and wheat are well off their high prices from a couple of years ago. So... Uh, We've had a very, very strong farm sector up until last year, and uh, this year uh, doesn't look to be any better. So another one of our sectors of the economy has weakened as the um, less than uh, stellar times rotate through our economy. So even right now you're starting to see Goldman uh, has said that the um, automobile sector is due for a correction. So there's a lot of things pointing towards economic softening, which ironically will support interest rates too. So we're going to enter uh, today's market uh, with no news here. China cut its interest rate for the third time. Uh, that took their markets up. Reflects their concerns about the economy. Greece has a um, 700 and I think 87 million dollar payment, or that they have to make to the IMF tomorrow. They don't have the funds to do that. Um, the anti-austerity government uh, is in Europe negotiating furiously uh, to make sure that they can keep the Greek game going. So we'll have a lot of Greek news this week out of the EU, and uh, the biggest piece of economic news for the month. <clears throat> is behind us uh, with this Friday's uh, unemployment release. Uh, nobody believes the numbers right now. 93 million Americans don't work. And this is the problem. What we need to turn this economy around are jobs. And you got to feel for the Fed. Every time they do something to prop up the economy, the um, uh, bureaucracies come in with new rules and regulations that uh, stifle growth and it's growth that we need. So we got volume at 28. <clears throat> We've got volume down here starting at 13, and my guess is we're looking at a trading range today. We, we should have really, really good support in this uh, 12 area, and that's a ways away, so we'll make 12 to 16 support, and resistance uh, should begin at uh, 28. And so the issue for us is, do we sell 23s, do we sell 27s? So we'll make 27s, 31, sell 1, 3 to 7, sell 2. On the buy side, we'll make 17 to 13, buy 1. And then 5 to 9, buy 2. And we'll see how that plays out. We might take a 23 to get in uh, to get off the short. We don't know, but right now it looks like we got a saddle formation. It's going to be pretty easy to get pulled back up to 28. Okay, looking at the ZB, you can see that volume falls away pretty quickly, and we've got, um, when we get down to uh, below 154.24. So where does support lie? Is it 8 to 10, or is it 4 to 8? So we're pointed lower. I think we got a shot at getting stops beneath where we are, so 5 to 9 will be buy 1. 
and 29 to 01 will be buy two. Picking up this volume right here. On the sell side, we've got volume at 22. We've got volume at uh, 30. And we're at 18, so <clears throat> 23, 27, sell one. And then we'll pick up that spill, 31 to 03 for sell two. Gold was pretty quiet overnight. Um, not a lot of news out of Yemen uh, to drive the trading. Not much uh, out of Europe yet on what's going to happen to Greece. So I, I think with the Greece um, problem hanging over the market, pretty hard for me to see gold being sold. Uh, we had pretty good support in the 80 to 85 area. It's still there. So maybe a little bit lower, 80, 82. And we'll put a question mark by 85. <clears throat> and then our 75, 77 for buy two. 90 to 92 on the sell side. And then 95, 97 for sell two. Well, in Europe, uh, <clears throat> it's, uh, we're getting pretty close to a decision. Uh, they're really, really good at kicking the can down the road. What are we going to do with Greece this week with the IMF payment? That's tomorrow. So there's a lot of pressure put on them. Um, the stories out of Europe, um, an alternate currency for uh, Greece. Uh, Europe's preparing for uh, the for Greek to leave. Greece to leave the uh, European Union. I, I mean, it's just kind of all over the map. So we don't wait, don't know what we have. Uh, the bureau bureaucrats in Brussels will fight like hell uh, to um, maintain the status quo. So that's probably the biggest force beneath the surface that's um, trying to hold this whole thing together. Uh, it's probably in Greece's long-term interest as is Spain's and Italy and the rest of them, to leave the EU. And <clears throat> when you look at how coalitions or, I mean, in the ultimate case, empires uh, peak and turn and head the other way like that, you start losing members or countries at the periphery. Um, you can no longer defend them. You can no longer afford to. Uh, keep them up, and so they fall by the wayside. And I'm not saying that's going to happen here, but that's the way it works historically. And um, we'll see if that plays out um, with Greece, too. I think it's probably in both parties' best interest to uh, see Greece go in an orderly um, fashion, maybe over a five- to ten-year horizon. But I have no idea how it will resolve or how it will shape up this week. My guess is they get a deal to keep it going to give them more time to talk. So we're going to sell 11.75s, sell twos 112, buy one will be 111, 111.10, and then 10.75, plus or minus. Okay, crude oil is kind of holding its own. Um, got pretty good support down there, 58, 58, 50. Uh, we're knocking on that door. Uh, the resistance uh, definitely above 62, but you have to figure that 60 is where it's at right now. So 59, 75, 60, sell one. 60, 50, plus or minus, sell two. 
On the buy side, 58, 75, 59, and then 58 and a quarter, 58, 50 for buy two. Things are pretty quiet out of the Middle East. Didn't read um, anything that suggested that the fighting or tensions are escalating. Um, <clears throat> pretty quiet on the ISIS front. Um, Seymour Hirsch has a big uh, expose out talking about how how we got bin Laden was a fabrication or a lie. I, I mean, I, I, you never know with Seymour Hirsch. Sometimes he turns something over that's meaningful. Quite often he doesn't. But he's made a great living over the years uh, putting out sensational headlines and stories that keeps him at the uh, front looking for the next expose. And even when he's discredited, uh, he manages to land on both feet. So And looking at the E-mini, the most normal occurrence after a pause day, I mean, a trend day is a pause day. So I'm guessing we got a seller um, in the uh, 2115, 2120 area. And we have a buyer against the buck. So last trade's nine. So the first area of support's going to be 2105. Second area of support's going to be 2100. No news to drive our trading here today. Uh, first resistance is going to be um, I think getting stops above the overnight session. So we'll play for a 14 to 16 sell. It, it may take a 12, 12 and a half to get in. I don't know. But right now the market is pointed up. And then 19 to 21 for sell two. I don't know how China's interest rate cut. Um, impacts our market directly, but it is supportive because another central bank is doing what the other central banks are doing, cutting interest rates to prop up the stock market. It'll take about 20 minutes to get everything up and posted. I'm going to get busy on that. I will see you as soon as possible.